welcome back, it's actually been quite a while since I have talked to you, so hello. Now, the last time I did a fever video, it was over three weeks ago, and what I did was my last, um, well, draft. So, with my fee uh, Goodbye FIFA 20 video somewhere in the nether realm, I thought I'd come in and talk a little bit about who is going to be the most promising talent um, in this brand new season. It's kicked off just there, and I thought, and also, by the way, uh, this is actually for FIFA 21, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, who I think is actually going to do well in terms of the actual game, and who to look out for, but more importantly, who I think is going to stand out for the new season. So, without further ado, all 20 teams are going to be scrutinised. I'm going to pick one player of uh, who to look out for, for this brand new season, and especially for FIFA 21. So without further ado, let's get into it. Kicking it off then with Leeds United and Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips is a 24-year-old midfielder, and although he isn't particularly young, or particularly old either, I think he is going to be one of the standout players of the season. Some of you may know uh, this kind of name, because he actually got a Team of the Season card last year, but I think this guy is going to be uh, not a one-to-watch card, but definitely one to watch. And honestly, I can't believe he's actually not been snapped up by a Premier League team. So yeah, Calvin Phillips, you're going to be my one to look out for. Manchester United and Daniel James. Now I know you are all screaming in the comments, why not Mason Greenwood? And honestly, yeah, Mason Greenwood is an incredible player. I have massive respect for him. But, and this is going to sound hypocritical later on, uh, due to the things that he did during the England squad, I'm actually not really going to give him much airtime. But I think Daniel James is actually really underrated and kind of forgotten about. He's a really quick uh, Welsh right mid midfielder, so yeah, I think he's going to be kind of surprisingly good this season. He's going to get a lot of game time. Liverpool and Curtis Jones. Now, Curtis Jones has kind of gone through the radar a little bit. Nonetheless, though, he is a Premier League winning player. Just... And you know what? I actually going to tip this man to be the next Jordan Henderson. He's a really solid rock, and I think he's going to get an awful lot of game time this season. Well, more anyway than last season. Uh, and I think this is maybe another Trent Alexander-Arnold player that's really going to, you know, flourish. Kind of be Henderson's understudy. And yeah, I think he's going to be kind of like uh, Pritchett's really solid player. Manchester City and Phil Foden. This is by no means Phil Froden's breakthrough season. That was last season. And judging from the fact that he... Well, okay. He has a Man of the Match card in FIFA 20. And the fact that he is quite a beast of a player. If, I've, if you've ever actually seen him, and I don't really like to say this often about Manchester City players, but he is amazing. Future England star, definitely. One to watch for sure. Everton and Jared Brainwhite. A player who actually really stood out to me last season, especially in his performance against Arsenal. Really solid player. Don't think he gets enough credit or enough game time. So I think this season uh, is definitely he's going to be one to look out for. Uh, not only just with just generic things about his game, but also just his defensive standpoint. I mean, what a player. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to be Everton's underrated player of the season. Apart from Hamas Rodriguez, but we don't talk about him because I'm a Real fan. Southampton and Shane Long. No particular reason, it's just bleh. Shane Long. You have to include him as something, right? Sheffield and Ender Stevens. Really exciting Irish prospect, well, not prospect, pretty established player already. Solid defender, solid rock. And uh, yeah, him and John Egan, I have a massive appreciation for. So I think they uh, thought that partnership were really good. But more importantly, uh, and Stevens, left wing back. What a player, I think. Uh, for sure, I think he's going to have a good season. And might have something to do with the keeping up of Sheffield in the Premier League. Aston Villa and Mahmoud Trezge. A beast in FIFA 20. A beast in real life. Any time that I have seen this man play, I have been so... So outstanded by his pace, his talent, pretty much everything about him. He's a solid player. Um, would I say, like, Salah level? No. But I think this man is an absolute beast of a player. And one of the reasons uh, why Aston Villa are still in the Premier League. So, yeah, apart from him, Jack, Jack Grealish. So, watch out for this man this season. Burnley and Nick Pope. Nick Pope has already established himself to be not just like Burnley's number one goalkeeper, but almost England number one goalkeeper. This man is incredible. And I'm not a huge entire fan for goalkeepers. I'm not a goalkeeper myself. But guys, genuinely, this man 
is amazing. And out of the whole Burnley side, I reckon he's going to be the one that's going to su surprise the most people, maybe not, but definitely put in killer performances. This man is going to be one to watch. Leicester and Soyuncu. Now, I possibly could have butchered the name there. In fact, I probably did butcher the name. But this man has really surprised me. Any time that I've watched Le uh, Leicester, I have been really surprised by just how composed he is. He's an amazing defender, a really underrated defender as well. He kind of broke through a little bit last season. But this man is actually a really big underdog. And I think he's going to be a pillar for uh, Leicester to actually build on over the next few years. I think he's a really good guy. Arsenal and Bokoyo Saka. Saka, and I do not like Arsenal in any way, shape or form, but Saka is one of those players that no matter who he plays for, you have to make an exception for. He's incredibly young. But already, I mean, okay, he hasn't achieved that much because with Arsenal in general, but just, this man can play anywhere. And I mean anywhere. Really solid man. Definitely one to watch. Tottenham and Matt Doherty. Do I really need to say any more? Wolves, right wing back, Ireland. If he isn't in your like team now, in your fantasy team, in your FIFA team, doesn't matter. Go put him in. He's an absolute legend. Really composed, really down to earth. Nice man. It's his breakthrough season for sure. Probably going to get ones to watch cards, sure. Uh, but yeah, this guy is definitely, he got a few Team of the Weeks last year. He's definitely going to get a few Team of the Weeks this year. Fulham and Mitrovic. Now, not a young player at all. Uh, I suppose not a talent isn't actually doing him justice. He's a really good talent, and I have been really surprised. One of the things that I suppose when Fulham were relegated and I looked at their team, you know, they actually have some really good players. They're just not really able to keep in the Premier League. So for Mitrovic, I think he's going to be a key player in possibly being able to keep them up. Wolves and Adama Traore. This man is a boxer. He, I don't, him and Akin Fenwa should start a club of professional boxing footballers. I mean, look at those arms. Bigger than my goddamn head. Serious, I mean, ha, how can you have arms that big? Anyway, he's quick. He's stocky. What more do you want? He's like the second quickest uh, player in the Premier League. I mean, come on. This man is a beast and he's going to do, do well. Brighton and Maupe. Maupe is like Bovril. You either love it or you hate it. Weird analogy, but a pretty useful one, actually. I'm a really big fan of this man. When he played against Arsenal, I was watching that game, and I could actually be nothing but surprised, actually. Okay, yeah, he's a little bit of a hothead, sure, but this man has so much talent. He's just talent seeping out of him. I mean, just wow. Yeah, definitely one to look out for. Crystal Palace and Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha, I'm not really sure how he's still with this team because Crystal Palace are no great shakes. But like, what a player. He's everything you want in a striker, in a centre forward. And yeah, sure, he's not particularly that young or interesting, and he's definitely a proven footballer, but guys, he got a team of the season card last year. You just can't count him out of anything. Newcastle and Saint Maxime. I am such a fan of this man, and I have been for a few years. He's quick, and I know, okay, there's a theme going here, yeah, definitely. But any time that I've seen him play, I have been nothing but impressed. And it's very rare for a footballer to do that to me. He's, he's just amazing. So, yeah, definitely a player, to, one to watch. Just Not even just with FIFA, but just in real life. West Brom and Dara O'Shea. Irish defender. Do I really need to say much more? I mean, yeah. To be honest with you, he hasn't had much Irish experience in terms of the international level. But, I mean... He doesn't need to. I think he's going to really impress people. And I, I'm going to make a bold prediction. 
that Aston or not Aston Villa, uh, West Brom are actually going to stay up for this season. Maybe not next season, but this season. Chelsea and Billy Gilmore. Now, Scotsman and football. Apart from uh, Kenny Dalglish, not much history there. Um, but I think this man's going to be a little bit of a wonder kid. I, I actually think he's really going to do well. Um, the Chelsea Youth Academy recently have been pumping out some mega stars. So this guy, I think, is going to be one to watch out for as well. Um, slightly unusual, maybe not, but there you go. Alright guys, then that is my 20, I suppose, <sighs> surprise players that I think are going to do well this season. Not only in real life, but also in FIFA 21. The game is out in less than a month, ladies and gentlemen. I will be buying it. As soon as it comes out, I haven't got it pre-ordered because um, I, I didn't have very much cash money at the time. So, yeah, I do apologise. But that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching. And, uh, yeah, we will see you, um, well, probably on Thursday with our next instalment of Speedrunning Horizon 4. And uh, hopefully then on Friday we will have our Livery Friday Showcase, um, which I still have to record. So that's going to do us, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you, hopefully, on Thursday. Goodbye.